Hey guys, no long time no see. It has been a little bit since I've made a video. Um, and as most of you probably know, um, I just had a baby. So that's why I had a little bit of a break um, and why I've been gone. So I wanted to just do a video today and just get ready and tell you guys about my labor and delivery and everything. Um, and show you like what products I've been using and just kind of catch up and let you know what's been going on. So yeah, um, today, what is today? Today is February 20th and I called into work today because I just haven't been feeling the greatest and my job's just been really stressful lately and I just needed, I just needed a day off. I just needed it. And I don't know how much longer I'll be at this job. But, um, yeah, I just, I just needed a day. So, um, my kids still went over to my parents' house today and I just, I just took the day. I haven't like had any time like that, um, really since she's been born and I just needed a day to myself. So yeah, that's what I'm doing today. It's Thursday, so I'll have to work tomorrow, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, so I had a baby, um, just over four months ago. Um, her name is Olivia and she was born on October 18th and she was a scheduled C-section so we knew like when she was going to be born and everything. So yes and she is adorable. She is perfect. <laughs> so yeah um, I'm just gonna get started getting ready. I'm gonna use my Too Faced uh, Primed and Poreless little primer. So yeah, let's see. I have like some health issues going on as well. That's kind of like acting up today. So I hope it doesn't affect my video at all. Um, and I'm gonna have to like tell you guys about it because it's a crazy thing. It's like this weird disease I was diagnosed with that doesn't really have a name. So I don't know, I'll tell you guys about it towards the end and see if any of you have heard of anything like this or know of anyone it's really rare so I don't know I guess we'll see but yeah so let's go back to last time I saw you guys um I did a video on the day of my like sprinkle or baby shower whatever you want to call it it's like for your second baby so it's not like as big as a normal shower but it was still pretty big um and that turned out to be really really sweet and that was like 19 days I think before we had her um, so yeah, um, we ended up, I ended up leaving or being done with my job a little bit sooner, um, because my parents were really sick or my dad was really sick and we didn't want to risk us getting sick at all right before I'm, you know, going to be having surgery and having a baby come home. So, um, I ended up taking like one extra day off before maternity leave and I think it was nice because it gave us extra time. Um, and so when we had her, um, Nolan went to my parents' house and Rupert went over to Brendan's mom's house. I'm using this Neutrogena little concealer. It is the Mineral Shears Concealer in the color Fair. So yeah, um, so the night before, you know, we, Brendan got out of work at noon that day so that we could have like time together as a family and he could help me like pack them up and everything and then at like I don't know like seven or eight or something like that um my parents and Brendan's mom came and picked you know up Rupert and Nolan and so we had the rest of the night to like finish packing our hospital bags because we weren't even like done doing that yet and um we wanted the house to be like spotless so that like when we came home from the hospital we wouldn't have a single like dirty piece of clothing or a single dish in the dishwasher or anything you know <laughs> so we stayed up until like 1 30 a.m like cleaning and just like preparing and like i just like didn't even feel like tired at all i was just like too excited and nervous and all the feelings <laughs> so um yeah so we, and we had to wake up at like five i think because we had to be to the hospital by seven and so um, we had to, or be to the hospital by 7.30, so we had to wake up or leave by 7. So, yeah. Um, so the next day, we got up and we got ready after only sleeping like a couple hours. And uh, which we ended up kind of regretting, but 
it's okay. Um, if you hear, see this like bed situation, we're like, we just bought a new mattress and it's not being delivered yet. And so we brought down like our spare little bed that Brennan has been sleeping on because he can't sleep on that one anymore. He's like, I'm done. It's, it's an old mattress. Um, and so Rupert's laying on it now, but our room's just kind of a hot mess. And I moved her pack and play from behind me because I was like cleaning back here. And so it's like a mess over here, but at least the back is nice. Okay, so my, for my foundation, I've been doing, well, I've only done it once, so hopefully it works out, but uh, this Maybelline Mineral Power Concealer, it's like kind of old, um, and this Ole um, Baby Cream, um, they're both pretty fair. I'm like the palest that I am like any time during the year right now, and this like, I f it feels good on my skin because it's so like wintry and cold and my skin gets really dry. So this feels good on my skin, but it doesn't really have any coverage, but this like kind of adds the coverage. So I'm going to mix the two on my little coaster thingy here. Um, so where was I at? So yeah, so we got up and got ready to go to the hospital. I did end up filming me like getting ready and doing my makeup. Um, but I never ended up posting it yet. I actually haven't even like watched it all the way through. So I was thinking about still like maybe posting it. Um, just kind of for like nostalgia and stuff, but yeah, so I did my makeup and everything, um, before going to the hospital, which I don't regret. It was, it was nice to do that. Um, and then we were off, we went to the hospital. Um, I'm trying to think if we picked up Brendan food on the way. I don't think we did. I couldn't eat anything because I was having surgery, obviously. So, um... I don't remember if we picked him up food. I don't think that we did. Um, but yeah, so we just went to the hospital. Um, there's those two things. I'm going to mix them together. And we checked in and everything. And um, they went to like, the only problem that we really had with the whole thing, to be honest, was they, but it gets, it gets, it gets worse after. But um, for, before the surgery, they, um, where is that? They were trying to do an IV in me and because I was like super dehydrated because you can't drink any water before surgery but also because I probably didn't drink enough the day before and we were like up late cleaning and like running around and I was probably like super dehydrated you know just from that. Use my beauty blender. Um, They could not get an IV in me and I'm not even kidding when I tell you it took 45 minutes in multiple nurses to come in and try. They poked me so many times. I even tried doing an IV in like my finger or something like that. It was so weird. It was like on my thumb, I think. They tried doing like one on my thumb and they could not get one. And one time like my blood like squirted out and like went out all over the floor because they had to do like, you know, when they like do the tourniquet thingy or whatever to like try to get it to get your veins to pop up. And I was bawling because it hurt so bad and I was like nervous and I just wanted it to be done. <laughs> and so they finally got one after like 45 minutes. So that was a mess. Um, but yeah, so this C-section was so much different because with my first son, um, when I had him, uh, it was an emergency C-section and my epidural had stopped working and um, they had to put me to sleep. <laughs> So I never really knew what it was like having a C-section. I've never been awake for a C-section. So that part kind of scared me. <laughs> um, my face is really red today. But yeah, so it was so weird to like actually walk myself into the emergency room or into the operating room. And like, you know, I got up on the bed and they had to do the spinal, which honestly hurt way 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 less than an epidural did um <laughs> like wasn't even bad like I was crying and shaking because I was like so scared and it happened and I like went numb instantly and the only thing that I can say which was really weird was like it felt like I needed to move my legs like it felt like I really needed to and you know like with the epidural you can like kind of move your legs still um with this you can't move at all and so it just felt really weird because it felt like I had to move my legs, but I couldn't. And so that kind of freaked me out. <laughs> but um, 
yeah, after they had done that and they laid me down and they got like the sheet all up and they like prepped me and stuff, they didn't bring Brendan in until after that. Um, I need a little bit more concealer on my face because it's not doing well with this foundation. <laughs> it needs like super red. I mean, it's not too bad, but uh, I'm using the uh, Dream Mousse Concealer from Maybelline. This is long discontinued, but still one of my favorites and I'm trying to use it up, but enjoy it. Um, so yeah, um, he came in and I just told him like, no matter what, like, do not stop talking to me. Just talk to me the whole time. I don't want to like hear anything that's going on because people will tell me like, oh, you will hear them like suctioning blood and like all this stuff. And other people were like, you'll be moving all around and like, they'll like, you'll feel them like lift you up off the table when they're trying to pull the baby out. Like people were freaking me out when they were like, tell me about it. Um, so I was like, please just talk to me the whole time because I don't want, like, I need to be distracted. And he was like, okay. So we were just kept talking about like, what color hair do you think she, do you think she's going to have hair? Um, what color eyes do you think she's going to have? How, how much do you think she's going to weigh? How long do you think she's going to be? And like all this stuff. And, um, we had like a really nice anesthesiologist and he was there and he talked to us and he was just super, super nice. Um, and so, um, before it even started though, like I was like, just keep talking to me. And then like, after like a minute, I kind of like felt like my body move. And I like looked at the anesthesiologist and I'm like, are they going? And he was like, yeah, they've been going. And I was like, oh my God, like they didn't even like, they don't tell you like, we're going to start now. Like they just did it. And like, I had no clue. I'm um, going to use some of this powder, some Maybelline mineral power, um, loose powder with this, uh, Sigma brush. So yeah, so they just like, we're doing it. And, um, I couldn't feel a thing. It was not that bad. People like were freaking me out about it and it was a breeze. It really, really was. And then, um, when they went to pull her out, I remember so many people were telling me like, oh, uh, it'll feel like, um, someone's sitting, even they in the hospital before they did it, they were like, it's going to feel like someone's sitting on your chest and you can't breathe. And that scared the crap out of me because I'm like claustrophobic and like the thought of like feeling like I'm getting like held down kind of or like someone sitting on me really scares the heck out of me. I kind of look silly right now, but it like really, really scared me that thought. And, um, someone else told me that they broke a rib when they were trying to pull a baby out during a C-section. So I was honestly kind of terrified. Um, but when they like went to do it, like I just felt like a little bit of pressure. I could still breathe fine. It did not feel like someone was sitting on me. Like it was a breeze, but, um, it took a while for them to pull her out. And then they said that they had to use the four, like four steps to get her out, which is kind of crazy. Um, but everything went fine. She came out and I'll never forget. Like I never even noticed this until they like lifted it up, but, um, where like the sheet thing is. They were like, they like pulled her out and I like, um, heard them like, say like she's here and they like pulled up the little flap and they were just like holding her like, <laughs> with the, like her chest down and I'll never forget like seeing her for the first time and she was like, you know, like that dark, like purpley color and her hair was like black, black cause it was like wet, you know, and her little like swollen little face. It was just, oh, it was so cute. And, um, yeah, so she was born at 9.55 a.m. on October 18th, 2019, and she was 7 pounds, 10 ounces, so exactly 2 pounds less than Nolan. He was 9 pounds, 10 ounces. He was huge. And then, um, she was 20 and a half, or no, 20 and 3 fourths inches long, um, and Nolan was like 24 something. I don't remember the exact length, but I think he was like 23 and a half. Like, he was really big, um, so yeah, she was, she was like good size though. You know, she wasn't like tiny. Um, she was like average. He was just huge. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so they went and they like cleaned her up and everything. And, um, Brendan got to go over and like, he didn't get to cut like the normal cord, but he got to cut like the one that was like for her stump, you know? And, um, then they brought her over to me and like put her on my chest and it was just like, so special, but it was like scary because like, like you can't really like see them and they're like so close up on you. And I kept thinking like maybe she was going to fall. Um, I'm using the Wet n Wild coverall powder. 
but yeah it was just super special um and the whole thing just seemed to go by really quick and it was a breeze to be honest like I just kept telling everyone like this was a breeze 10 out of 10 would recommend like it was great and I was like I'll have a million other babies like this like it was perfect so I thought <laughs> so we go back to the room and it's still pretty early I can't eat anything for a while I couldn't eat anything until like that evening so I was pretty starving by that point because I didn't eat like the day before and the day of so it was like pretty starving but yeah um oh and I didn't mention before I only gained um 9.4 pounds or something like that 9.2 pounds something like that with her um so yeah I didn't really gain much so when I like came home from the hospital I weighed like a lot less than when I did when I got pregnant um, but I've gained a little bit of that back, to be honest. Um, I'm going to use this little, this is like an eyeshadow, but it's like a bronzy color. It's like a little bit like a warmy, warm, warmish color, like a mauve. Um, and I've been using this to just kind of like warm up my face a little bit. Um, so yeah, so we go back to the room and um, I just wanted the first person to meet her to be Nolan. And so a few hours later... Um, my mom came to the hospital, just my mom, because my dad was still really sick, which was really sad. He didn't get to meet her. Well, he got to see her the day that we were going home with her, um, but he didn't like it. He didn't touch her or anything like that. He just looked at her from like in the thing because he was still really sick for a few weeks. He didn't get to hold her until like two or three weeks old. But um, yeah, so just my mom and Nolan came and it was just so sweet he just like climbed up on the bed with me and we took a video of it like I wanted to have it all you know filmed so we filmed the whole thing of him like coming in and us telling him her name and um you know giving him the gift from her and just stuff like that it was just such a special moment and it was just so great um so yeah and then who else came to visit that day um my brother and his girlfriend came and Brendan's dad and stepmom and their two little kids came and that's all the people that came that day um so it was good and you know that night I was able to eat like in the evening um my brother and his girlfriend brought me uh Jimmy John's so I was able to like eat some food which was nice um let's see i'm gonna use a little bit of this bronzer now the maybelline mineral power it's like almost gone um so yeah then you know we tried settling in for the night and she was just like not really crying all night but kind of like whimpering and she was like she kept making this like grunting sound like i don't really know how to describe it like she was just like grunting a lot and like kind of like whimpering all night long like every minute so we just we didn't get any sleep that whole night because like it just didn't really seem to stop it kind of seemed to stop a little bit like when we would hold her but like you're not supposed to sleep with them especially when they're that little and stuff so we just didn't get any well especially Brennan because I couldn't I was still um hooked up to everything and I couldn't get out of bed yet so I was still like kind of numb for a while it was weird um let's see I'm gonna use a little bit of this over top of it just kind of like as a blush it's this like Victoria's Secret um powder it has like some like purpley mauve colors in there um so yeah it just seemed like something was like wrong but like looking back we didn't really realize that like we like we weren't alarmed but like something was wrong and so um the next day we like got her dressed into her first little outfit and everything and my mom and nolan were planning on coming up and um she had to have like a bunch of tests done um i'm gonna use this elf eyelid primer so yeah she had to have like a bunch of tests done and so they had people coming in and they were doing different things and then one nurse came in and she was doing her like blood oxygen test or something like that and she failed that they were supposed to have like at least a 95 i want to say 
and hers was like in the low 90s and I could tell the girl was like feeling bad and like wanting her to pass and so she wasn't like trying to cheat the test but she was like kind of like putting an oxygen mask like blowing towards her face just to see if like maybe it would help um and she failed it three times in a row so she was like you know this machine sometimes it like doesn't read it the best I'm just going to take her across the hall and do it, the test on like a better machine and see if um if we can get a better reading okay so I'm really trying to finish up this eyeshadow <laughs> um and so I've just been using this like all over my lid and in my crease and it's actually kind of pretty um with this fluffy brush and it's super easy too um so yeah so they took her across the hall and we like didn't really think anything of it um and then like maybe 10 or 15 minutes later they come over and they get us and they were like you need to come with us and so of course I'm like freaking out and right when we're going I see Nolan and my mom go into our room or they're coming down the hall to our room and so I like wave at Nolan and I was like we'll be right back um so we went over with them and when we get in the room there's literally like 20 doctors like all around her in this little like incubator thing and they've got her like hooked up to a bunch of stuff and they were like something's wrong she keeps you know her blood oxygen level is not good um and they said she's something is either either wrong with her heart or with her lungs um so we need to do an echo on her heart and we need to um do some tests with their lungs or something like that to see what well, basically they wanted to see if maybe her heart chambers like hadn't closed all the way and they wanted to see if there was fluid in her lungs because with c-section babies a lot of times um they don't have contractions that like squeeze all the fluid like out of their lungs so when they're born they still have a lot of fluid in their lungs and they can't really get it all out um and natural birth is supposed to do that so they do the test and they said both were happening like her heart chambers didn't close all the way and her um she had water in her lungs and so they said that they weren't really concerned about her heart because a lot of babies their chambers of their heart aren't really closed up and especially with c-section babies because i guess like when you go into labor it kind of like I don't know like some hormone is released that like tells the baby's heart to like start closing those chambers of their heart or something I don't really know but um they said they weren't really concerned about that that a lot of babies would have that but they just don't really test for that you know what I mean so they said it's mo most likely just um that she was born with a c-section and she didn't get all the fluid out of her lungs and she's like she's in respiratory distress and she can't breathe very well so i was kind of a mess um they said she needs to go down to the nicu she needs to get set up on oxygen and um see if we can get her like saturation levels to go up um because at that point they were going down into like the 70s and then the 80s which is not good so um they took her down to the NICU and I went you know over with my mom and Nolan and I was like a crying mess and um they were like we'll wait here like you go down to the NICU with her so um I got a little bit of makeup on my shirt so we went down to the NICU and um it was so sad to like see her like in her little incubator and she was hooked up to so much stuff um but they didn't have to put her on a feeding tube, so that was good. Um, but they they just said she couldn't eat for like a couple days. Like I couldn't breastfeed her and she wasn't able to have any bottles until like they were afraid that she wouldn't be able to breathe at all um, when she was eating. So that was kind of sad. Um, oh, I'm using this Mary Kay blush as an eyeshadow. Um, just doing like an all matte kind of look. Um so yeah so she was all hooked up down there and I felt bad because we weren't we were down there with her for like a few hours and Nolan and my mom were just like sitting in, her, in our room like watching tv and like she was like trying to keep him entertained 
for a few hours, but like they understood. And then, um, like we went back up there and it was just hard because like I had just had surgery and I was like trying to recover myself. Um, I was like just walking around for the first time, you know, and my baby is like not with me. She's in the NICU, you know, and oh, I don't want to cry. It was just hard because, you know, you want to be with them the whole time. And I feel like I didn't really get to recover very well because of that, because I was like walking around way too much and like going up and down to the different floors and stuff. And I was missing like my medications because they would be like looking for me and like I was in the NICU and like some nurses would be nice and like come down and like do everything down there with me. Uh, but other ones would just be like, I don't know. So I like wouldn't have pain meds for a long time and it would like really, really hurt. <laughs> so, cause you know, I just had surgery and stuff. It's a lot. <sighs> so I don't know. It was kind of sad and stressful, but, um, you know, uh, after a day or so, I was able to breastfeed her. My milk came in really well, um, which was really good. But um, she ended up having to stay in the NICU for a while. Um, not as long as a lot of the babies in there. Let me tell you, a lot of those babies in there were in there for like two months and stuff like that. That's a really long time. Um, I'm using this L'Oreal Visible Lift Powder. Look, it's literally like almost gone. <laughs> I'm just going to clean up fallout with that because it's like a super light powder. So, yeah. Um, we ended up having, we got discharged from the hospital which was really sad because I was only able to be there for four days. And so, and she was in the NICU for I think like six or seven days, something like that. Like we weren't able to bring her home um, when we went home. And so the night that we went home, it was really late. Um, we just had to be out of there by midnight. And so of course we stayed pretty late. We stayed till like 10 PM. Um, and we asked my parents if, you know, they would just still keep Nolan for the next few days because we'd be basically just at the NICU the whole time um, with her. So they were like, yeah, we'll do that. And so um, it was really sad because I feel like I didn't really get to see Nolan like at all for like a week, um, which was really, really sad. Um and he, the, he couldn't come into the NICU. Like, it's a very sterile area. Um, and you can't have, like, you can't have more than you and one other person with you. So, like, me and my husband, you know. So, no one else came to the NICU. Um, there's just a lot of babies in there. And it's, like, a sterile environment. So, like, every time you go there, you have to get, like, scrubbed in completely. Like, no jewelry, no phones. Like, none of that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah. So... Let's see, I'm gonna do, I think I'm just gonna do that for my eyes. Maybe I'll add like a little bit of shimmer. This is random, but I have like this card eyeshadow from Mary Kay. Um, I have like a bunch of these for some reason, but it's in sheer pink, I think. And I'm just gonna put some of that on my inner corner. Um, so yeah, we didn't really get to see Nolan a lot, but it was, <laughs> that was really, really sad. But um, we had really, really nice uh, people, both in, like upstairs where I was and in the NICU. So I was grateful for that. They're all really, really nice. And the one guy doctor that we had down in the NICU, he was like, um, you know, like my shift goes through till Friday or till Wednesday, which was like two days away or something like that. And he was like, I fully intend on discharging her by the time I go home, which was like sweet. Obviously he has to like, <laughs> not just do it just because he wants to like she needs to be healthy but it like get, like reassured me that he thought she was doing really well and she did she did really well we did lots of skin to skin and breastfeeding and stuff like that that every time like we would get there they said like her oxygen levels like she would have like some like desats like a couple times and then um like when we would come and uh, talk to her and like hold her and do skin to skin and stuff she'd be at 100% like the whole time so they were like be here as much as you can and we literally were we literally lived in the NICU for <laughs> the whole time that she was in there we didn't ever leave like we just we didn't really eat or anything so um yeah um so she finally got to go home 
um, I think it was like on the 23rd or 24th, something like that, one of those days. Um, I'm using the Tarte um, Brow Mousse and medium, medium brown, yeah. Um, so, but randomly, right before we were supposed to like leave with her, I got anaphylaxis again, which I talked about in another video of mine that I had gotten that from the flu shot. Um, that's like a whole other story I'm gonna have to get into because like something is like wrong with me, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been a rough year. Um, so yeah, we got to take her home though. My parents met us with Nolan at the hospital and, um, we got to take them all home and Rupert was already home because we had like. I don't think I mentioned this, but like we had picked Rupert up on our way home and we got discharged even though it was like 10 or 1030 at night. So I was like, I cannot go home to a completely empty house with like Nolan not being there, Rupert not being there and like my new baby not coming home, you know. And so we went and picked Rupert up and it was nice to at least have him there. Um, so yeah, we only basically were home just to sleep for a little bit. And then we'd be like going back to the NICU. Like I keep messing up on these brows. <sighs> so yeah, so she, we got to bring her home though. Everything went really, really well. Like Rupert didn't really care like to really meet her. Like he likes her, but he doesn't really like care about her that much. And um, Nolan loves her. They do so well together. He loves helping with everything. Um, my maternity leave went really well. Um, I was only approved with my job to have eight weeks for recovery time, but my doctor like wrote a note saying I wasn't recovered enough, even though I was, <laughs> um, so that I could have the full 12 weeks off, which I got. And I had to go back to work just over a month ago. So that was kind of sad, but um, we're so close to being debt free like really, really close. And then we're going to um, just probably have me be a stay at home mom because I just, I want to be there with my kids. And if we could afford it, like why not? Um, daycare is really expensive. So, and my parents watch them now, which is nice, but they live kind of far away. They live like 40 minutes away ish. So to bring them there all the time is a lot. Oh, my back hurts. <laughs> so yeah, now she is healthy. She is big. She is happy. <laughs> she is smiley. She is beautiful. And I just feel so blessed. Like, I'm just so glad that she is doing so well. Um, I'm going to curl my eyelashes. So that's going good. And then I'll kind of update you guys. Like, you, if you follow my channel, you probably know that me and Brendan both have had, like, the craziest health crap going on in our lives this year him with like his eating and his heart and his everything like so much stuff and then with me I have had like a bunch of other stuff like you know I had to get my tooth my tooth like died and I had to get it pulled and like uh having low amniotic fluid when I was pregnant and um being anemic and stuff like I don't know there's just like a lot of stuff going on but um and like my migraines that I was getting all the time and that ringing in my ear that I have that never goes away all I hear is a heartbeat in my ear now um on that one side so but um when we were exactly one month away from having Olivia um I got the flu shot because I was talking to getting the flu shot I've never had the flu shot before and I don't want to say like I'm super against them, but like, I don't know. I just never had gotten one and I wasn't really interested in getting one, but they kind of guilted me into doing it. So I did it and I got, um, I had this crazy aller allergic reaction like a couple hours later where I got hives. I don't know. I didn't get hives that time. I just had anaphylaxis. Like I couldn't breathe. I, I was super itchy all inside my body. And I was itchy like inside my lungs and my throat um, and my chest. Like, I don't know. It was really, really weird. Um, and 
I went to the ER, they were like, you're having anaphylaxis. They gave me like EpiPen in my leg, Benadryl, a uh, bunch of medications, uh, breathing treatment, like all this stuff. And it went away and they were like, okay, like you're probably just allergic to the flu shot. Like just don't ever get the flu shot again. And I was like, all right, sounds good. Well then after that, between that time and the time that I had Olivia, I had it two more times, but it was like not as severe. I was able to stay home and just take Benadryl and it would go away. Then after I had her and she was in the NICU the day that we were supposed to bring her home, I had it pretty bad. Um, and they had to like call in like emergency people to the NICU to um, like come and assess me. I forget to say what I'm using. I use this Elme eyeliner. I think that's the last thing. And then I'm using this um, telescopic mascara and waterproof. I don't think they sell this one anymore, which is sad. Um, but yeah, so they came and like, they were like, you really need to go to the doctor. So I went to a bunch of different doctors and no one could really figure out what was going on. They were trying to figure out like what I was allergic to and it just didn't add up. Like I wasn't using anything new. I wasn't eating anything new, all this stuff. Um, so then we ended up finding out we had like a mold issue in our house, which I posted about on Instagram. Um, like we went to go and get our Christmas tree out of our storage room and we had like some extra car seats in there, um, that were like being stored and they were completely covered in mold. A bunch of stuff in that room was completely covered in molds. Ended up being like our sump pump, like something was like messed up with that and like that was attached to that room where the sump pump was and everything in there was just like completely covered in mold. So it was a really, really big issue that we had to get cleaned and like new drywall and baseboards and carpets cleaned and threw away all of our stuff. We had to throw away our Christmas tree, so much stuff like that. It was crazy. Um, so then I was like, oh, maybe it's just like we had mold and like, that's why I keep having these crazy allergic reactions, but nope, I kept having them. And so I went to this allergist and they were doing a bunch of testing on me and I wasn't allergic to like they did the, uh, like that poke test, the prick test. And I wasn't allergic to anything. Um, so they did, they were like, I want to order this like really rare, like blood test. And I was like, okay. Cause they were like, it's like, there's no reason why you keep getting this. And that's why it's like super confusing. Um, and so they ordered this blood test and he ends up calling me and telling me that it was positive for it, but it, that it doesn't have a name. So basically, uh, I think he said it's like autoimmune disease. Um, and he said, I have, what is this eyelash in there? I have a disease where I don't know if it's just like happened out of nowhere, but you guys know, like I've always had really sensitive skin. I get hives really easily, like all this stuff. Like it's like my body's like hyper, hypersensitive. Um, and he said, um, he doesn't know if it's like just came up or if I've had it for a long time or what, like why the anaphylaxis. Cause I've had anaphylaxis like 15 times in the last like four months, five months. Um, he said that basically I have an auto antibody against my mast cells and mast cells are what give you, um, they release histamines. They give you like hives and allergic reactions and stuff like that. And he said that my body basically just randomly for no reason at all, will just like have an allergic reaction for no reason because these things are like attacking these cells that release histamines. And so that's why I get like hives really crazy um, and different things like that. And he said that there are like some triggers that could like cause it, um, but also it could just happen for no reason at all. And there's like nothing I can do about it. Um, and he said, there's no cure for it. Um, there's nothing that he can do to make it stop, but that some patients, it will just like go away out of nowhere too. So that's why I'm praying that it just like eventually one day will just go away and I won't have this anymore because it's really scary to like not be able to breathe. Um, so that's kind of what's been going on with that. 
Um, since then, he's had me do a lot of things. Like, I had to cut out dairy, nuts, and medication for three weeks, which was really hard because, for one, like, dairies and everything. I love dairy, like cheese and ice cream. <laughs> um, and, like, milk is in everything. But also, because I get headaches and migraines, like, all the time. Like, I get a headache almost every single day of my life. And I couldn't take anything for it. Um, so that was really, really awful. Um, and then, what else? So, but I did that for three weeks. And it, and then I introduced them back in, like, one thing at a time per week. And um, it didn't make it worse. So that's good. And I didn't really get better either, though. I haven't had anaphylaxis, though, since he put me on all these medications. But I've gotten hives pretty bad. Um, but after he like upped all my meds like a few, like a month or so ago, I haven't had any hives. I've just had um, like a lot of breathing issues. So like I was having it today, like when I was cleaning a lot before this video. Um, it just feels like, I don't know, like maybe like an asthma attack or something. Because he has me on like medications that like also are for people that have asthma too, I think. Um... So, yeah, I'm on, like, <laughs> I have to take, like, six or seven med medications a day, um, which is kind of a lot and kind of crazy, but, um, that's I so far. It looks like it's getting hopefully cute. <laughs> it's kind of easy, but I still take a long time because I'm talking a lot. Um, so, yeah, the medications so far have been working pretty well. Um, I like always have to have an, an, an inhaler and Benadryl and an EpiPen on me like at all times, um, which is kind of like scary and also kind of annoying. Um, so there's that, but I get, I'm glad that I haven't, I haven't had anaphylaxis in like six weeks. So that's really good. Um, let's see, I'm just gonna put some of this, like, Rimmel lips, lip gloss on, and then maybe some lip liner. <sighs> so, yeah, um, it's kind of getting, like, under control. It's not getting better, because it's, like, it's still there. Um, but it's getting, like, under control a little bit, I guess I could say. What is this? This is a wet wild thing, and... I don't know, something like brandy or something like that. Um, so yeah, uh, I don't want to be on this on the medications though. And I've talked to him about that and he is very understanding and um, wants me to hopefully be able to get off of them too. And um, I don't know. It's just a lot. He just said, like, we need to make sure that I'm getting, like, under control first. And then we can try to, like, wean off. But, like, right now I take, like, so many medications. It's not even funny. Um, and I have to take them, like, in the morning and at night. And I have, like, three different inhalers. And I don't know. This is, like, hard to draw on when I do lip gloss. But I don't want it to be too opaque on its own. So yeah, maybe I'll put a little bit of lipstick on over that. Let's do this L'Oreal Rose Taffeta. Yeah, that's like a good color. <sighs> so yeah, that's um, kind of an update on me and a labor and delivery story and just, I don't know why I haven't been making any videos recently obviously like having a new board is a huge change and you don't really have any time for yourself so I mean I don't have any time to film either I don't even have time to I haven't painted my nails in like six months I haven't you know I don't really have time to do anything for yourself but especially when you have a newborn and a toddler because a toddler keeps you up all day and the newborn keeps you up all night so but yeah and all this health stuff going on like it definitely hasn't been helping either but I don't know if you guys want to maybe just like say some prayers or um send some nice thoughts out <laughs> for us and just um you know I, I believe that things are getting better and I believe you know God puts us through things for a reason and so 
you know, I have faith that we're going to get through it and that everything's going to be okay. And, you know, this is just a season that we have to go through and that, you know, things will probably get better down the road. But yeah, anyways, <sighs> thank you for sticking with me. And, um, I appreciate all you guys that are here and, um, Stay tuned for some videos. I'm not sure when I'll post this one uh, with those because I'm going to try to do a couple more today. Um, my family's going to be home soon, but I need to do uh, my three-year uh, no-buy update, and I need to do a um, empties video, and I need to do a Project Pan video, and just lots of stuff. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Thank you so much for being here and sticking with me, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.